Welcome uh, to the European Parliament. Uh, I'm Matthijs Schuster from uh, Elnet. We are here just after a hearing that took place on the topic of UNRWA. And I have here with me a member of the European Parliament, David Lega, a member of the Committee on Foreign Affairs, and also the chair of the Working Group on External Financial Instruments under the Committee of Foreign Affairs. Um, welcome, uh, David. And I have with me as well Hillel Neuer, the Executive Director of uh, UN Watch. Uh, welcome to the European Parliament. Thank you. Um, David, just to, to kick off with, uh, yeah. with you a first question. Um, why did you invite uh, Hillel uh, to speak on this particular topic at this time here in the European Parliament? Well, I'm one of those who have been following UNRWA's actions and how they have been working in, in the Gaza Strip and in the West Bank for the full mandate and been very upset about the fact that so much of our EU taxpayers' money have gone to foster uh, anti-Semitic hate in textbooks, among other things. So when now the new allegations and accusations of UNRWA being more active in the horrible attacks of Hamas on October 7th, we needed to actually have a discussion on that proof, that evidence, and see what really happened. And that's why I invented UN Watch, who presented the evidence. And, of course, there has been a tremendous amount of controversy around uh, UNRWA and the role of UNRWA that it has been, uh, been playing. Also, uh, running up to this hearing uh, in the Parliament, there was, uh, there was a lot of turmoil, so to say. Um, how did the hearing go? What, what, what was the atmosphere? What, uh, what happened? You know, the, I'm astonished at how the meeting went. Um, it was, in the end, off the record and without cameras. I can't disclose any names of specific members. But first, many members of the left parties within the parliament, the left, the Greens and the Social Democrats, wanted us not to have the meeting at all because they, did, they said that UN Watch wasn't a trustful organization. After that, they refused the cameras within the meeting. So we need to remove the cameras and have it off the record. And then finally, they came to the meeting just to say that they're leaving the meeting, refusing to take part of it, after ex uh, accusing Mr. Neuer of actually being a criminal. And then they left without having him a chance to give him his defense on what they were doing. So I'm astonished that in a democratic house like this, my colleagues don't listen to arguments that they don't agree with. That is why we're here. Yes. to discuss even with those we don't agree with. Yes, indeed. I mean, the, the core of democracy, uh, I would say. Um, so I'm uh, ashamed of my colleagues. Yes, yes. Hillel, if, if I may, may turn to you, what, what, can you maybe share with us some of the insights that you brought up during the hearing that are so important for this parliament to hear and understand from what you have learned about, uh, about UNRWA and all the investigations that you have been doing? Sure, I'll, I'll first uh, begin by saying I want to thank David Lega for inviting me here today. The information we have is not information that the European Commission typically provides. It's certainly not information that UNRWA provides, which is the truth about what's happening with EU and other US and other taxpayer funds going to UNRWA. And the information that I provided was that I would say responding to UNRWA claims. UNRWA has, I would say, three main claims. Number one, they claim UNRWA does life-saving work. This mantra is echoed and parroted by ambassadors and many other apologists around the world. UNRWA does life-saving work. Well, that's a bit hard to say. Uh, now in March 2024, when some 450 terrorists by Hamas and Islamic Jihad are known to be working for UNRWA in Gaza, and that information's going to be coming out in a couple of weeks, going to be very embarrassing for many of UNRWA's apologists. We know that at least 15 UNRWA employees took part in the massacre and the atrocities of October 7. This includes Faisal Alami, an UNRWA social worker who kidnapped the lifeless body of 21-year-old Yonatan Samarano. We know that there are UNRWA terror tunnels underneath, sorry, Hamas terror tunnels underneath UNRWA headquarters in Gaza. The UNRWA chief said, we did not know anything about what is underneath our headquarters. Really, the Wall Street Journal reported that 10 years ago, in the UNRWA compound, the parking lot was sinking and no one said anything. No one wanted to talk about it because everyone knew what Hamas was doing, but you, you get death if you speak about it. And even the electricity was connected to the, to the tunnels, right? Indeed, the, electric, the electricity going into the Hamas terror tunnel had, was operating a spy intelligence center computer uh, server farm. The cables were going right into the uh, uh, UNRWA's electricity grid. So 
It's preposterous. It doesn't uh, respect our intelligence for the head of UNRWA, Philippe Lazzarini, to say we didn't know what was underneath UNRWA headquarters. And, um, you know, then we're told that UNRWA takes all allegations seriously. Takes all allegations seriously. Well, you know what? I told the European Parliament today in the committee that for nine years we've been sending them reports about hundreds of UNRWA teachers and school principals who systematically glorify Adolf Hitler, cheer terrorist attacks, and call to murder Jews, like Elham Mansour, an UNRWA teacher of Lebanon. May 2022, she said, we need to slaughter all Jews. So when we brought this to their attention, they refused to meet with us, they refused to investigate, they disparaged us publicly, they attacked us. That was their response. They do not take the allegations seriously. Finally, I told the parliament that UNRWA, that the UNRWA says that they are irreplaceable. Well, they're only irreplaceable in that the Secretary General told all the other UN agencies they're forbidden from taking any of the work that UNRWA did. If America wants to pay to help people in Gaza, Guterres told the World Food Program and others, you are forbidden to take any money to help the people of Gaza because he wants to shield the monopoly of UNRWA. So uh, the truth is that UNRWA is replaceable and that I do believe if we want to help Palestinians and Israelis, we can find other humanitarian aid agencies, whether they're UN, whether they're non-governmental organizations that will feed Palestinians, help them without financing terrorism. Yes, and I think you know, you're, you're already looking a little bit uh, towards the future. Uh, I know one of the, the topics you touched upon is also the issue of textbooks education of Palestinian children. I know, uh, David, that you've been very involved in this uh, topic inside the parliament through various committees like the Budget Control Committee. Um, would you like to, to make a, a couple of remarks uh, on that? Well, I think that it's a bit upsetting when we hear European representatives now saying that no European taxpayers' money went to directly or indirectly help uh, fund the terrorist attacks. But since we know what schools the terrorists went to, we have been funding those and we have as an institution been turning a blind eye to the fact that these school books teach hate and have been yes. doing such for so many years. So that is one thing that we absolutely need to stop doing. But right now, I mean, the, we need to release the hostages. That's number one. We need to dismantle Hamas to be able to do anything like this again. And we need to really do our best to help the Palestinian people because they need our help. But I'm not sure that UNRWA is the only way we can do that. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is to help the Palestinian people. And honestly, I haven't seen a single starving or um, malnourished uh, Hamas terrorist for this. They have the food. The Palestinian people don't. So we need to find better ways to help. UNRWA has lost my confidence. And uh, turning to you, uh, Hillel, uh, looking to the near and maybe a bit farther future, how do you see the role of UNRWA in, in the context of all of this? Look, for as I said, for nine years we've been calling for something very simple, very modest, which is that UNRWA should fire the teachers who celebrate uh, anti-Semitism and jihadi terrorism and should investigate how it is that they've come to hire thousands of these people. And what we realize now after October 7th is that there's really, there's nothing left for UNRWA to improve on or to reform. It is irreformable. What we understood is that what happened on October 7th was the narrative of return. The Palestinians who invaded, the terrorists who invaded, massacred, mutilated, raped, and tortured, did so under the uh, teaching and belief that they are returning to their home. And their, their return is a violent and brutal return that they dream of. That is what they learned in the UNRWA narrative for 75 years. They learned it in Lebanon, they're learning it in Gaza. They're told your home is not here in Gaza, your home is in Israel and you have to go and take it back through all means necessary. So we shouldn't have any more naivete. The UNRWA narrative is to say that Israel will be dismantled and Palestinians have a right of return. So if we want our money to do anything good, giving, it to money, giving money to UNRWA is really throwing it into the garbage. Even worse, it's poisoning Palestinians, poisoning their future. We need to help Palestinians, but with an agency that is invested in a vision for the future, not in building terror tunnels and going into the past of hatred and grievances. Yes, and creating fertile ground for people to live together mm, absolutely. Uh, without hate and war. Um, David, uh, as a member of the European Parliament, um, the EU, 
still remaining the biggest uh, donor of UNRWA, uh, paying the largest uh, amounts. Um, how do you see your role as a member of parliament, but also the parliament as a whole in, in dealing with this issue and, uh, and, 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 and trying to find a way forward? Well, as we said, the European Union is the single largest donor with our member states to UNRWA. And we do have a responsibility to make sure that our taxpayers' money don't fund terrorism and hate. It goes, should we, have, we should be able to say that without making it that controversial. So what we need to do is find another way to continue to help the Palestinian people, but make sure that money is spent wisely and this is not okay. Okay, I thank you very much for your, uh, for your time and also for uh, Hillel, for you coming here to the, the Parliament to share with us uh, all your knowledge and, and, and the findings and, and the work that you're doing uh, from uh, UN Watch uh, based in uh, Geneva and uh, David Lega, member of the European Parliament from uh, Sweden, EPP, uh, thank you for, uh, for hosting us. Thank, thank you. you.